Eugene, the friend of Princess Honoria, is killed by one of the secret agents of the Emperor Valentinian. But who gave the order? Honoria knew that in such a case of murder without trial, the officer was given a written order, so that he would be protected against any legal proceedings. Aetius and Valentinian have surrounded this affair with a thick fog. They said the princess was suspected of preparing a coup d'etat with Eugene. Honoria wished to make an inquiry in order to learn the truth of the death of Eugene, and was at once under a domestic arrest. She was even refused to attend the marriage of his brother Valentinian, in order to avoid the increase of the scandal. She was proposed to leave for Constantinople and to pray to God to forgive her sins, to lead a pious life and not to marry. Honoria felt that her life was in danger and after a long period of despair and suffering decided to join in Constantinople her mother and her uncle Theodosius, the emperor of the Eastern Roman Empire. Honoria thus finds herself in the company strange to her, of the sisters of Theodosius and their suite of noble virgins. The princess, accustomed to finery, is obliged to wear plain clothes. Despite the fragility of nutrition, fasting often lasts several days. Part of the time is used for embroidery. All compete in religious ardor, including the emperor Theodosius, and devote several hours of the day and night to pray and recite psalms. The three sisters of Theodosius transformed the imperial palace of Constantinople and it became like a convent. Instead of an inert emperor, the state was in reality governed by his sister Pulcheria. In 414, at 16, she obtained the title of Augusta. At that time, Theodosius was 14 years old, was not interested in state affairs, and devoted himself to his training. He learned grammar, rhetoric, philosophy with the best of the professors in the company of the children of the noblest families of the empire, riding and archery. Theodosius learned all the delicacy of the court ceremonial, endeavoring to behave with the grandeur suited to a Roman emperor. Pulcheria and her two sisters dedicated their virginity to God. This solemn vow was inscribed on golden tablets ornamented with precious stones, which they offered to the cathedral of the capital. The sisters spent much of their time in prayer. Accompanied by the crowd of virgins of distinguished birth, the entrance to the palace was forbidden to men, except priests, teachers, guards and rare employees. This did not, however, prevent Pulcheria from marrying afterwards with General Martian, who undertook not to avail himself of any right of the husband. This decision can only be explained by the thirst for power. The same motives led her to find for her brother a bride, counting on the recognition and obedience of the chosen girl. That is why the story of Theodosius's marriage resembles a fairy tale. Leontius, Athenian philosopher, had a daughter, Athenius, endowed with great beauty and a lively spirit, brought up in the traditional Greek religion. She had a golden hair, large eyes, a dazzling complexion, elegant manners, and had received a fine training. His father bequeathed almost all his fortune to his two sons, leaving only 100 pieces of gold to his daughter. He thought she would not lose with her beauty, her mind and her training. The brothers refused to support Athenai, and the girl was obliged to throw herself at the feet of the Augusta in the hope of obtaining justice or favor. After a few conversations with this exceptional girl, Pulcheria decided that she deserved the attention of Theodosius, who was then 20 years old. On the occasion of the imperial marriage, great celebrations and popular festivals were organized in the capital and the provinces. Athenae was baptized and received the name of Eudoxia, 
At the end of the year she gave birth to a daughter, also called Eudoxia, like her mother, who on this occasion received the title of Augusta. The new empress emphasized her religious fervor and continued to develop the talents that had contributed to her elevation. She created the poetic versions of the first eight books of the Old Testament and other religious works, wrote a panegyric of Theodosius' victories over the Persians. The young emperor was delighted with the works of his wife. He also loved to write and draw, to copy old books, was a good calligrapher and often worked even during the night. The victories of the armies of Theodosius in the short war against the Persians were greatly exaggerated. It was said, for example, that an army of a hundred thousand warriors, who struck with terror, threw themselves into the waves of the Euphrates. Soon a peace of one hundred years was signed. The Persians were astonished by the conduct of the bishop of the city of Amida, who declared that God did not eat or drink, did not need the golden vessels of the churches. He organized the sale of church property and redeemed, with the proceeds of this sale, the thousands captive Persians, supplied them with all they needed, and sent them back to their native country with the wishes of peace.